Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Well, it's debatable, and I'll tell you why it's debatable in a minute. The greatest pool players in the world had the very worst alignments in pool history. You, what, what matters is that you have a straight stroke, okay? That's, that's what matters the most. Uh, Willie Hoppy, probably in the top five greatest pool players ever, uh, had a terrible alignment. He had that uh, sidearm stroke. Uh, from playing when he was a kid. Uh, Keith McCready, everybody knows he's got that sidearm stroke. That's not a good alignment. <laughs> uh, Ralph Greenleaf, when he was sober, I mean, he, he was beating Willie Moscone. Um, you can't argue with Ralph Greenleaf's record. Uh, problem was, he was never sober. Um... Flawed alignment today would include um, Shane Van Boney, Francisco Bustamani, and the great Efren Reyes. So, I mean, you know, you can be militant about this and, and you know, um, and insist that you have to have a perfect alignment to play great pool, and that is not the fact. What matters is that you have a great stroke, a straight, great stroke. Um, uh, so these guys went on to become incredible monster pool players despite their bad alignment. But I can't recommend having a bad alignment and trying to consistently play great pool. The problem is we don't have the luxury of having a great pool instructor in back of us watching us when we first pick up a cue. So we just do it, you know, whatever way feels natural. And the pool is not natural. So, what's it mean? Um, that your forearm, your wrist, uh, your shoulder, um, your is all in line with your cue. Let me show you what I mean here. You get down on the shaft, you don't move, and your elbow your wrist and your forearm, everything's in a perfectly straight line. I'm going to have to readjust this camera and get it back of me so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. See, so it's, it's, it's almost impossible for me to tell if this is right while I'm doing it. It, it wasn't. You see how my elbow was tucked in like that? It should be up like that. In a perfect straight line with my cue. This part of my wrist is flawed. And you'll see in the videos coming up. Um, your wrist and your elbow. This should be straight down at 90 degrees from the floor. Now most of the time I do that right, but at the end of the stroke I'm tucking in a little. I have that corkscrew thing going on. That's a flaw. It should stay straight through the stroke. And other guys do this. It's 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 unnatural. Just stroke through while keeping this part of your arm 90 degrees from the floor. And then the elbow on the forearm should also stay 90 degrees from the floor. This is going to be hard on your shoulder. you got to kind of lock that sh my, my arm, my elbow, naturally wants to go like this while I'm playing. 
And that's why I think I'm tucking it. But I'm not here to say that I have a perfect alignment. I don't. It's flow. And it's good for you to see my flows so you can adjust it if you decide to adjust it. It's robotic. Get that shoulder locked in. Get that elbow up in the air and in line with the cue. Just like that. Now, being like that and following through with the stroke is two different stories. You can start like this and then drop your elbow. It's not good. And I think I mentioned Shane Van Boning, right? This is what Shane does. He, he starts his stroke here with his elbow tucked in. You know, going that way. Most of the time I have a chicken wing like that. Especially when I'm really down on the shot. Which is, you know, just another one of my flaws. The Shane starts like this, right? He does his warm-up strokes and then he pauses at the cue ball. He comes back and pauses again. Okay? And then he pulls back a little bit more and as he's pulling back he's straightening his elbow up and shooting. That's a flaw of alignment. But how the hell are you gonna tell Shane Van Boning he's doing it wrong? This is the way he plays. And he's an incredible pool player. You can't you can't deny that Shane Van Boning is an incredible pool player. So should you adjust. Um If you've been playing just a couple of years, you probably should. What, what's best to do is start out, you know, your your pool playing journey doing it right. And that way you never have to adjust anything and your chances of having a straight stroke are much better than someone that's doing it wrong. Um, let me show you what these big, great uh, sidearm players did their whole lives. Um, here's here's the problem. These guys started playing as little kids and, and they could barely see the table. So their eyes were just reaching the top of the table. So naturally, you know, they don't have the luxury of shooting with their elbow up in the air like that. So they had to cock their arms sideways and just kind of reach at the shot. And what happens is they start getting good. So they never adjusted it. And as they grew through the years, they stayed with that sidearm stroke. Keith McCready mentioned somewhere that he tried to adjust this later on, you know, in his career and he couldn't do it. It was too it was too ingrained. He had learned to shoot straight with that sidearm stroke. And the same thing with Ralph Greenleaf, really Hoppy. And that's just name three of, of many, many who, who, who had this problem. They were little kids, they couldn't reach the table, so they had to have a sideways, a sidearm stroke. So as they grew up through the years, they stayed with that sidearm stroke. So another issue dealing with alignment is having a level ahead. So your eyes sh should be parallel with the table. You know, you don't want to head like this while you're shooting because you're not going to get a good sight on the cue or the object. And you don't want it like this. You want it straight, your eyes parallel with the table. Um, so that's number one in alignment. And then your shoulder, your elbow, your forearm, and your wrist. Should all be in line. And these will give you the best chances of developing a straight stroke instead of saying, okay, my alignment's off, but despite that, I developed a straight stroke. It's possible, obviously. Uh, it's just kind of the hard way to do it.
with me. It's a tough issue to explain. Uh, let's just give a shout out to John Moore, who played his whole life right-handed, but with his left eye over the cube. Okay? So, you know, we talked about having a level head and, and parallel eyes to the table. So, being a, his right hand and his cue was under his left eye, it would send his neck in an awkward position like that. And it screwed up his neck. He had serious neck problems. So he switched to playing left hand. Top level pro. Played his whole life right handed. Switched to playing left handed. And plays just as good today as if not better. He's winning right now. He's winning everything. Than he ever did. Try it out someday. <laughs> Cheers, John. Peace, man. I was watching the videos that you're about to watch. And I, I didn't catch it until now. I was like, oh, God, i got to work on that. How can I make a, a video about alignment when my wrist is twisted? <laughs> you know? That's a bit hypocritical. Uh, uh, it, you know, I, I, th I think I said somewhere in this video that it's best to just do it right from the start. Um, but if it's, you know, fixing it after, you know, 10 or 20 years of doing it, unless you're John Moore, um, it's going to be difficult for him. Someone should have taught you this, but they, the people probably saw it while you are out there playing, but nobody stepped in and said, hey, bud, you're developing a really bad habit there. What do you say we get on to... Uh, these runouts and I'll point out I'll try to do it and I don't want to cut the video I don't want to pause it or anything if I have to I will um, I'll ju I'm just going to try to analyze it live and point out a couple things you might want to know about it might help you with your own game that's kind of the style we go by around here we have the disc style yeah, but I mean, it should be educational and entertaining, and that's what I'm trying to do. Not everybody digs on it, but, you know. <laughs> Peace. Yeah, it matters, but what matters most is your stroke. It's got to be straight. Everything matters. Of course it matters. Don't go asking stupid questions. <laughs> Sorry, man. Combination, oh, golf. All right, it's the day of the Yankee. I'm really sorry about this, guys. I mean no harm. I'm just kind of screwing around. But let's just uh, let walk, ramble, and whine for a couple minutes just so we can kind of accept the guy the way he is, okay? Well, if you don't hit your ball, you didn't hit you don't you? Well, my problem. No, I didn't have, have much room to shoot this hit. shot. I had to get by the 15. You said you got to hit my hit the eight ball. Hit my ball is took a chance on scratching there, but it came out what? alive. Too bad. You got to hit the eight ball. Taking care of downtown. Now we're no, transferring to uptown. And, um, I, yeah, well, you see what's going on here. All right, go ahead. I have to get by whatever ball that strike anyway. ball was. And so how do you play this four ball to get uh, to get on the A? We'll watch it. And, uh, yeah, just shoot it in the side. Uh, people make that too hard, and they go further down table to shoot it in the corner. And there's hit, absolutely hit, hit, hit it. no good reason chance. to do that. Keep it simple. Yeah, what do we got going on here? 
I'm trying to figure out which balls I want to think. And once again, we have to get by that 15 ball. I don't know. I'm shooting 15. Okay, I'm taking the stripes here. So that was the only that was the only stripe down table. So everything else is up table, and I should have six more balls up table, and that's where the eight ball is too. You see that that spread out stance right there? I got that from Tony Moje. And when I have a long straight in shot that demands a perfectly straight stroke, you'll see me get way down on the shaft where it actually rubs against the side of my chin and uh, my stance is real wide. Tony shoots every shot like that. And I realized that one day that I can aim and stroke straight, as straight as an arrow, when I'm standing like that, when I'm getting down on the ball like that. Watch my wrist here. See how it tucked in there at the end? That corkscrew stroke right there? Uh, maybe we'll loop that back at the end. Uh, that's a bad habit, and that's a bad alignment. So I debated a little, see I'm jacked up here, um, I debated a little bit on how to shoot this, but I figured the best way is just, I'm always stuck on the route, and this is the difference between me and, you know, a great, 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 really pro player, I'm, I'm always on the route, and they're always trying very hard not to get on the route, so I actually think I'm better than a lot of the pros at shooting rail shots because they never get on the rail and I'm always on the rail so I've had more practice shooting off the rail and I gotta work on that uh, so I was this time and uh, we have a bunch of problems here now I don't think that was a good uh, shot right there. I, I don't have a whole I gotta uh, actually deflect the cue ball to make the six ball. So I don't hit that four ball right next to it. Yep. And I had to I had to put a lot of left hand English on that to deflect the cue ball around the four. Not for me. And yeah, no matter where I got on the table, pretty much, I couldn't get wrong, so I just had to cinch that shot. I have to pay attention to my alignment. And if I'm a little bit better than you, then you should take a couple of tips here. And just watch my alignment really good. From the elbow, and my eye. Um, in my wrist, in my forearm, all that stuff. And I overshot, I shot that, yeah, I shot that too hard. I went way too long there, and I just wanted to shoot that seven ball in the side. And then now I have a really thin cut. I had to super cut that ball right there. But it was a natural position because I had to put right hand and bottom English on the so it was natural to get back on the end. We're playing eight ball today. Yeah. I heard the Where are my grand old upper shirt? A good friend of mine who's no longer with us gave me that shirt when she went to Gatlinburg. Came home every time she went to Gatlinburg, she bought me a shirt. Yeah, and Miss Janet, she's in some of my vlogs. Um, she used to come. This is where we met. Yeah, she she died Christmas Eve, not last Christmas, but the one before. <coughs> she had a blood clot and. It, it cut loose one day, and, and I, you know, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know the details of it. 
But all the blood rushed to her heart. And uh, she died. We used to uh, we used to do puzzles. <laughs> yeah, five hundred. You wouldn't think I'm a be a puzzle person, but yeah, we used to sit at her house and get absolutely annihilated drunk and do puzzles. You ever do a puzzle while you're drunk? Well, that's what that's what we did for entertainment. <laughs> I miss Jen. She was a good friend. She was always. Thinking about me. You see that bracelet on my left hand wrist? That red one right there? Yeah, she bought that for me. Yep, right there. It says, I promise not to smoke. Man, we're getting way off topic. Like, I'm in a rambly mood. I'm in a good mood, but I'm, I'm rambly. Like, I just did a bunch of crackers. <laughs> That was, that was good. I, I mean, I had to jack up on it and poke it. But, and I kept it straight. I had to draw back to that route, but I got a little too straight in on the three. I wanted a little bit of an angle on this three. And if you, if you loop back, if you watch this video again, it's like, well, which ball should I shoot first? The three or whatever ball I just shot. And uh, if you really analyze it, you'll figure out. See, this four ball does pass by that 15 and does go in the corner. Um, it's just a little bit iffy if I can get on the 1 and I actually hit the 1. And now I have to roll up. I have to put top on this ball. Because I have to go past, I think that's a 9 ball. I have to get down below that 9 ball. To get a shot on the 8. Yeah, I'm playing good. I can feel it in my stroke. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm playing good. And I'm about to call some old uh, friends and uh, come in and play because no one here will play me anymore. So I need to bring my own, my own action in. Yeah. Gary, I'm, calling, I'm about to call Gary Phillips. He's, he's a great local player. And, and me and him play pretty even. Um, so, to sharpen up my game. It always comes down to the question, does it matter? Does it matter? I don't know if it matters. What are you asking me for? What are you, stupid? <laughs> Alright, I need to quit. I'm getting on my own nerves. This place gets messier every day. Every day, man. Every time you come in here, it's like messier than it was last time. Been clearing all this out. I'm telling you, man. I've been busy around here building a chicken coop. <coughs> you want to see my chicken coop? It's not really a chicken coop. It's for vegetables. Fruits and vegetables. Needs work. Got to build a door on it. You want to see again? I don't want to pose by. And nuts. Fruits and vegetables and nuts are going to live off the land. Quit smoking too. Can't stop coughing. Addiction. It's a tough nut to crack, man. Good thing I'm not that type. I'm a smoker. Big deal. I don't do any drugs. No drugs at all. Uh, drink. How much? Does it matter? <laughs> ah, you'll get all of it. I, I don't know if you, if I don't know where I'm gonna put this stupid ass clip. 
But if you've already seen the roundhouse, then you, you heard Walt rambling in the background. He's from New York. Get me some coffee. He's from New York. I can't believe I used to talk like this. Get me some coffee. Put some water in the radiator. Yeah. Stupid. Sounds pretty stupid to me. Anyhow, oh yeah, I'm gonna quit smoking. Just fixed another Chrysler. Had a bad ground going from the battery to the ground. And there was another, another ground wire from something else, I don't know what it is. Um, they were both mounting on each other because it was a bad ground, so uh, the cable was heating up. And it would take about a half hour to heat up, and then it would drain the battery. While it was running, not, not while the key was off. The car was off, everything was fine. As soon as you start the car, uh, the battery would drain, and the battery is good, and the alternator, the second brand new alternator up there. And er everything was good in the charging system, you know. All the, you know, all the switches, all the relays, all the, you know, everything was great. But I had to take the ground nut off. I don't know why I'm putting this in the pool. Either. No one else could find it. I took it to a great mechanic, and they couldn't find it. I was like, I don't know what the hell's going on. You're going to have to take it to somebody. That can put, you know, a quarter million dollar machine on it and diagnose it. Like, I'm not paying a hundred bucks just to get this car diagnosed. I'll find it. So I brought it back home and, uh... Started thinking, maybe it's the starter solenoid. Everything else checks out fine. Um, so I'm thinking that this starter solenoid is... Is... Uh, stuck on start you know so while you're driving the car around it's still actually trying to start and that's frying something and draining the battery so I started taking the starter off but instead of getting to the starter bolts first I had to take the ground wire off and that's when I found it and so two wires were just frying themselves. The uh, the ground battery wire and some other ground that was hooked into the ground battery wire. So I put them on two different. I put two different ends on. I cut off the burnt part. You could actually smell the cable was burnt. So I guess is it. So I cut off the burnt part. You know. Put, it, put two new clips on each one of them, and then I grounded those wires, and I nailed it. Yeah, this is a job I did not want to do, because I'm not good with electricity. I'm, I'm good with other stuff, but I can't fix what I don't, I can't see. So, don't, don't. Expect me to fix your electric. I can fix everything else but your electric. I just, I just, I just don't have the knack for that crap. I can't see it. I can, how do you expect me to fix it if I can't see it? And I don't own, you know, I don't own all the fancy machines to find out where the hell this short is. And I, even if I did own them, I wouldn't know how the hell to use them. Yeah, electric, me and electric don't get along because I was fried when I was a little kid. Yeah, there's a lesson there to stay away from that shit. Anyhow, uh, there's my rant for today. I'm, I'm glad I got that, that car fixed. <laughs> it was driving me bananas. It was driving everyone bananas. So what's next? 
I don't know, I don't know, you know. I think, yeah, I'm at the point where there's like 500 videos in this playlist, and I think I've gone over every single topic in pool. And that's where I'm at. It's like, what can I offer that I haven't already offered? And this is, that's a, that's a problem here, man. You know, I don't want to repeat myself. And people come by and say, well, can you cover this? And like I did. Six months back there somewhere. You're going to have to search through that playlist. And, you know, this might be tooting my own horn, but if you really want to be a great pool player, you need to binge watch this playlist from the start to the finish. You will learn a lot about pool that you never even fathomed. Uh, as that's my best advice is just watch it all and practice it all and what the hell where do I go from here you know? I don't know I really think I covered everything we need to make another documentary that's where it's at. You need to retire. You retire and just lay here and get drunk for the rest of my day.